Hi, this is David Spears, and today I'd like to spend some time talking about software defined networking, or SDN, which is a pretty hot topic today in the industry. You know, one of the questions I've been getting a lot lately is, you know, this concept of SDN is great, the separation of the control plane and data plane is, is really pretty cool, but what are some of the use cases for SDN? You know, how is this going to provide some value for me? So I thought I'd put together a quick little uh, video that identifies a use case scenario for software-defined networking and, and walk through a demonstration of, of that working in, in my lab environment. So what we're going to be looking at is uh, intrusion detection and, and how that can be optimized with, with STN. So here we've got you know, what is a traditional IDS architecture where you've got an environment and, and you've got a, a tiered environment access layer devices aggregate up into you know larger connections and you've got an intrusion detection system or an IDS system at the aggregation point looking at all the traffic that's coming through uh, looking for known vulnerabilities based on a reputation database that that's built on and maintained on the IDS system so a user who connects to the environment that data gets sent through the environment and as long as that data passes through the IDS system it is interrogated to, to make sure that there aren't any known vulnerabilities and, and the way most systems are configured. If there aren't any vulnerabilities, the, the data is allowed to pass without any problem. Conversely, if there is a situation where someone tries to present uh, some data that or, or do something that, that is a known vulnerability, in this case, um, connecting up to a site that's known to, to host malware, um, you know, there's a pretty good chance that, that they've got some problem with their machine. So, you know, the IDS system will identify that and, in this example, block it and alert an administrator. And this works fine. But one of the challenges with today's IDS systems is you have to look at all the traffic. So you have to have these systems located in a point within the environment so they can see all the traffic. And, and as you add more systems, more access points, more data, more people to your environment, you need to increase the size of your IDS system. And, and as that continues to grow, your IDS system has to continue to grow with it. The other challenge you'll sometimes have with IDS solutions, depending on your architecture, is trying to find the right place to install the IDS system so it can actually look at enough interesting traffic. And, and that's also one of the challenges with traditional IDS solutions, is you have to make sure that they see the traffic. So sometimes that can be difficult to do as well. So let's take a look at SDN and what that might be able to do to help us um, with this kind of architecture and see what we can do to improve that. So here we've got a typical SDN architecture. Okay, We've got an SDN controller that is centralized and it is using the OpenFlow protocol to manage the data plane on the access layer devices. So in this case, we've got a uh, specific SDN flow created that takes any DNS request that is sent through. So it's just the DNS request, not the entire flow, just that DNS request and sends it up to the SDN controller for interrogation. And the SDN controller in this case has a security application running on it, which is going to interrogate that DNS packet against its vulnerability database to, to see if there's a problem with that particular packet. And if there is, then it'll actually go through and, and block it. But in this case right here, we don't have any problems with so the packet goes through the infrastructure just fine. In the case that we present a, a request to a malware site, the specific DNS packet is rerouted over to the SDN controller, not the entire flow. And the SDN controller looks at that DNS request against the reputation database identifies it as a, a vulnerability or a problem, and then goes through and blocks the access and alerts the administrator. Now the nice thing about this approach versus the traditional IDS approach is because we're only looking at specific packets. We're not looking at the entire flow. This doesn't have the same scale issues that you would have with a traditional IDS system. So it's much easier to add more access devices to the environment because you're only pulling out a portion of, of the flow instead of trying to look at the entire flow. The other nice thing about this particular solution over traditional IDS is we're actually able to manage the security at the perimeter of the network. 
So instead of doing that management inside your core, inside the aggregation points of your environment, you've actually turned these off-the-shelf switches that are running OpenFlow on them into security collectors. So you're actually able to, to manage the, the environment right on the ingress. So let's move over to the lab environment and see how this looks in action. Okay, so before we get into the demo, let's take a look at the lab environment so you can get an, an idea of how this is set up. So first, I've got an OpenFlow enabled switch, and for this lab, I'm using an HP 3800 switch. The HP switch line is really the, the switch of choice when it comes to SDN because of the depth of OpenFlow support within the HP product line. And that switch has got a dedicated connection to the SDN controller and we've got the SDN security application running on there which I'll show you. And then another VLAN which is really the controlled VLAN is used for communication between the client through the switch into the core and to the DNS server and out to the internet and we'll see how all that, that ties together. So first let's take a look at the 3800 switch and take a look at the configuration. Um, as you can see to set up OpenFlow uh, and SDN on a HP switch is really straightforward. All you need to do is identify the controller, the IP address of the controller, give it an arbitrary number, and then define how the switch is going to communicate with the controller, you know, that dedicated connection. And then you can create instances um, within the OpenFlow configuration. So the, underneath the instance, what you're doing is you're essentially tying the controlled VLAN to an actual controller and then enabling it. And it's really that that simple. So if we take a look at the status, we can see that OpenFlow is up and running. We can see the instance and it's operational. And then we can tell what OpenFlow version. So in this particular case, uh, you see OpenFlow 1.0. This particular switch does support 1.3. I just don't have it configured uh, for, this, for this demo. So then if we take a look at the actual instance, You can get a little bit more information. You can see that it's up and running, what VLAN um, is using, uh, and, and then we've got a connection status as well. Okay, so let's head over to the security application. And this application is, is actually where we're doing the interrogation of the DNS information. So let me go through here, and first I'm going to reset the counters. This is where you're going to actually see the OpenFlow process or the SDN process is taking the DNS request from the client and we'll actually see the client count and and then taking a look at those and comparing those against the reputation database that's that's set up and running on on the uh, security application. So down here we've got a series of different um, threat types and you can set up different policies based on what you want to do. And with this particular application, one thing that's that's kind of nice about it is you can also set up some custom blacklists uh, that have time ranges, date and time. So if you also wanted to, you know, beyond just the security aspect, if you wanted to block access to social media during the business hours, you could easily do that here as well. And you could drop a notifier, you could just um, drop the traffic as well. Okay, so let's pull in a client. I'm going to kind of set it over here so you can still get the counts over here. So what I've got is I've got a Windows machine and this is the actual client machine. And, and what you can see is this 10 address. This is actually the address that's uh, the controlled um, address. And if we take a look on the client and we do an NS lookup, oops, we can see that going through and, and our DNS server is um, giving us a response and telling us what the uh, what the address is for um, for places on the internet. Now if we take a look at and we can actually see over here as well right we see our, our count go up so if I do this again you can see we've got our count going up as well right. Now let's just do a quick check of a site that we know is in the reputation database. 
And what we see has happened, let me just slide this down a little bit, you can actually see, okay, we've actually identified an entry that is uh, a known site with malware, and we've actually um, you know, incremented the, the counters. But the other thing that we've done is we've done a redirect. So this address is an internal address. So instead of giving the client the actual address, what we've done is we've given them a redirect to a website where we can alert them that, that something has happened. Okay. So how does that how does that look in action? So if we come over here and we take a look at you know, going to a Google site, you know, or going to Google, everything works just fine. And then if we go to the site that I had in the reputation uh, database, we can see that that site's been blocked. And we've alerted the administrator that there's a problem, and the end user sees that there is a potential problem through the, the redirect message. So what we've done here with this environment is we've really shown how you can take an off-the-shelf switch that's OpenFlow enabled and through the assistance of an SDN controller and a security application, improve the scalability of an IDS solution, not only provide a more scalable solution, but also move security, which today traditionally is in the aggregation or core of the environment, and pushing that out to the edge so that we've got a better security posture than we did in the past. So that's the end of the demo. I hope you found it informative, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch, and have a great day. Thanks.